Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I can see. <coughs> so, hello everyone. We are Budapest Student Broadcast, and today our group will present you our project. And let's get started. So, I will introduce you the team members, and Regu will talk about the aims of our project. Ali and Yuan will show you the content creation distribution and marketing. Then Demon will talk about the result. And lastly, Polly will talk about uh, the future of our project. So six of us uh, took a part in Budapest Student Broadcast. Uh, Regu and Demon are our host for our series and a communication coordinator uh, who contact our guests. And Polly is our technical support uh, doing post-production, background music producer and co-host for our episode three. And me and Yuan are text editor and WeChat official account manager, uh, doing copywriting work and designing visual elements, posting and promoting contents on WeChat. Uh, Ali is video editor and Facebook page manager, and his main task is editing our interview videos and posting contents on our Facebook page. Uh, we divided our work quite equally, I think, and everyone has their own part. And now, uh, Regu will continue. Yes, uh, so you can see the logo that we designed for our our podcast and uh, talking about the aims um, by creating Budapest Student Broadcast, uh, we wanted to create an exciting and useful platform where uh, we were trying to create some kind of a bridge between the students community and the professional world. And uh, during these podcasts, we wanted to invite people um, who could offer some pieces of advice, interesting insights, and uh, maybe talking about their professional lives. And uh, we were trying to invite Corvinus alumni so that it can be connected to the university as well. While we were trying to, to get uh, other professionals as well who could, who could talk about their, their uh, experiences. And, uh, we were seeking to explore on the difficulties that the students have to face, especially during these times with the, with the coronavirus. And uh, to, to, achieve this, to achieve this goal, we used uh, platforms like Facebook, Microsoft Teams, YouTube, and also WeChat. And Ali is going to talk a bit more about that. So regarding our content, our initial plan was to produce four episodes and release them weekly uh, with our final episode being a live stream. Uh, of course, uh, arranging a proper time and meeting with our guests was a bit time consuming and caused us to have some a bit of delay for each. But in the end, we managed to uh, uh, release four podcasts as we planned to. and. Talking about the content creation, I should say that uh, the process of content creation and distri distribution for our project three parts, the re re uh, recording, releasing, and promoting. As we were running the project on a zero budget, uh, we had to uh, find the platforms which would let us to do all these three phases for free. So in, uh, when it came to uh, recording, we mainly used Microsoft Teams uh, except one of our interviews, which is on Zoom. And moving to the next part, which was uh, releasing, we used YouTube, the platform on which we did our live stream as well. Also, uh, for promoting, we used two platforms mainly, Facebook and Vita. Uh, we kept our viewers uh, updated by posting regularly on Facebook and inform them uh, upon releasing uh, each episode of our podcast. We also use other channels such as uh, publishing articles on the blog or group chats and talking about uh, our podcast uh, to spread word among our fellow province students out they were our main target. Apart from that, uh, we had the WeChat channel, which you on we talk about it in details. As one of the WeChat manager, I will illustrate how we promote our project on WeChat. The first thing that we did is to find and focus on our target audience. For WeChat, our target audience are the Chinese international students. 
the reason why we think WeChat has such potential is that the population of WeChat user is large. There are more than 300 Chinese international students in Corvinus alone. Uh, since we can only see the official page uh, in WeChat app, we are only going to show one article here. But we can check the element we designed and used on WeChat. And also the text we wrote is in a different style, differs from other platforms to adapt the taste of WeChat users. We also used our connections in Metropolitan University and Budapest Business School to reach students from other universities as well. And the results are promising. Next, Demons will talk about the content of our project. Yes, as part of the project, we recorded four interviews. The first three interviews were pre-recorded and posted on YouTube, whereas our fourth interview was streamed live on YouTube, where viewers could join and interact with our guests. The first interview had only audio content, and the rest of the interviews included video as well. In our first episode, we spoke to Professor Marton Retvari, who teaches at Queen's University, and he gave students several tips and insights on how to improve their public speaking skills. We also delved into teaching and how teaching has helped him in his career. And of course, we discussed the coronavirus and how one can remain productive during these pretty unusual times. Apart from that, we also discussed how students could improve their time management in order to raise their efficiency and productivity. For our second episode, we interviewed Mr. David Morris, who is an international diplomat from Australia and who has worked extensively throughout the world. He spoke about the importance of developing leadership traits and gave his insights on the international political and business climate and also stressed uh, about having a flexible approach towards one's career during these times. We then spoke to Mr. Bendugus Petervari Molnar, who is a professional rower and who has represented Hungary at the Olympics and is also currently studying at Corvinus University. We spoke to him about how he manages to balance academics while pursuing a professional athletic career. And finally, our final event was the fourth interview, which, as I mentioned before, we streamed live on YouTube. For this, we chose to have Mr. Alex McIntosh as our guest. Alex is a Canadian who currently lives in Budapest and is a presentation coach. His expertise is public speaking and communication skills, and he coaches people in various forms of public speaking. Apart from this, he also runs the Budapest Street Project through which he aims to help the homeless community here in Budapest. The live stream was successful as 97 people logged into the stream and many of them asked questions and interacted with our guests. Now I would let uh, Pali speak about the future scope of our project. So what's next for Budapest Students Broadcast? As you've seen throughout the presentation, we have managed to solve a uh, variety of technical issues and uh, get a but rather firm hold on both the technical and the social aspects of this project. In the future, we seek to utilize this in order to keep providing uh, interesting content, entertainment and useful resources for our fellow students. Thank you for listening and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this gap filling uh, project, which was which has been very long waited at uh, our university in terms of the or in the community of the international students. And I suppose that Richard uh, will have some questions because of the focus on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for this presentation. It was a uh, good idea. Uh, and I'm so curious, uh, why don't you distribute it, this podcast on podcast streaming channels? Yes, uh, uh, we first initially uh, wanted to uh, also publish it on Spotify, but then uh, we thought that maybe this action will like lead to uh, like some some kind of divisions of our viewers, and it just kind of break down the numbers we gain. 
in the end. So we decided to just focus on YouTube and like promote uh, uh, and focus on YouTube and promote our podcast on YouTube to gain more numbers. That's all. That was our philosophy. Well, okay. In, in, in retrospect, I believe maybe we should have focused on uh, WeChat if we wanted to get numbers. But uh, the idea was that we maybe reach some nice looking um, number on YouTube and uh, it will look good in the presentation. And that's also we had uh, like a few technical issues in the beginning that um, made very distrib distribution kind of uh, a challenge. And uh, we thought we would uh, expand as we get a hold of the technical part. Uh -huh. Just uh... To be clear, uh, if you say podcast, podcast is an audio content. So if you use a video, it's not a podcast, but a broadcast, uh, as uh, your as uh, your presentation said at the beginning. So use use this uh, word uh, in a good way. I mean podcast. So if you say podcast, you should uh, distribute it on audio streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and so on. And I'm so curious about the future. What kind of topics will you have? Well, we decided to uh, diversify our topics. In the beginning, uh, we mainly focus on the student body and uh, like the, the issues that are important to them. But as I, we have talked with our fellow team members, we have decided uh, to go like Go, uh, go and explore. I don't know more liberal topics that mm -hmm. can like. We were kind of not uh, allowed to do it during during this project time, as to keep our audience uh, to keep that our all the uh, content relevant for our target audience. But now that we have the, we are done with this project, we want to kind of go upper and higher and like talk about uh, various stuff. And how will you su sustain the project? I mean, the the workforce and uh, the finance financial part of this project. Yes, uh, for now, uh, I mean, the process of monetization for YouTube channel takes a long time, and finding sponsor also is not an easy, I mean, job, especially during this COVID era. So for now, all we have is our enthusiasm to run this project and like moving along with it. And it's also a good uh, part of our resume that we have done a podcast before and later on when we want to apply for a company, we can like show it as a good a part of our resume that we have provided and created content, media content for a specific target audience. So that's what motivates us. Okay, thank you for your answers. Hey everyone, so thank you so much for the presentation. It was great and I think it's, I also believe that it's a great idea. I may just have two questions. Uh, the one is that uh, one of you reflected on the numbers, on the views and the, the reach, right? So um, while I was watching the video or the, the screen and the presentation, I saw that the were decreased constantly. So did you observe the, the reason behind it? Now, do you have any um, perspective what 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 could happen and what would you do differently according to these numbers? Um, yeah, so this is the first question and I'm looking forward to hear your response. Uh, I can start and then uh, my fellow team members can like, continue. I think our our the huge difference between our first podcast, the view numbers and the other ones is that Mr. Redfari is quite famous and like popular in Corvinus University at Corvinus University. So when we released our first podcast, just many students really were really were eager to listen to that podcast. So it helped us to gain a huge number, like 600 just on YouTube. But the other, I guess, weren't like that, uh, I mean, famous and like well-known among uh, Corvinus students. So I think that was one of the reasons. Hmm. Actually, this reflects, I'm sorry, please. So, that was what I wanted. Okay, so my question, my second question, I think reflects on this as a, um, you know, continuing this idea. So, did you, um, how deep did you 
understand or try to understand the real need among your target audience. I mean that, you know, selecting the topic, asking the people, the interviews or the interview pe person, it's really, really important to provide something that your target audience is looking for. So for instance, you just mentioned Ali that you expect or you assume that the first interview or first um, material was as successful because Martin is very popular among um, Corvinus University people. But I was just wondering if you put any, you know, if you did any research on the topics that your audience were looking for, interested in before the broadcasting. And it's a team question. Oh. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, eventually, uh, you go first, Demons. Oh, yeah. Uh, we didn't uh, conduct any poll as such uh, to answer your question directly to uh, get direct feedback from our audience. But as all, as we are all international students and as Ali has been a part of uh, Budapest Blend, which is uh, the most uh, popular international organization here, we kind of had an idea about issues that students are facing. And uh, we also took a general view about uh, the pandemic and things that are, um, you know, questions that are percolating in every student's heads nowadays uh, due to these unusual times. And we kind of went on the basis of that. But to answer your question, we did not have any direct uh, poll or feedback from our uh, potential audience. Mm -hmm. So this is just a short like recommendation from my side, if I may have a you know chance to tell you, you know whatever whatever we do as a marketer or a communication person or or you know we always need to keep in mind and keep in mind the first our audience what do they want what are their needs right so if we create a product if we develop whatever we want to sell that right so and we can be sure that we are successful in case we understand clearly what are the needs and the only reason and only way to do that is go there get there out and ask about that and just or observe about that so i think it's really really important to understand and go as deep as possible to understand the needs and the pains like also latent pains latent needs that's also really really hard to understand but i think you know this is a great great opportunity for you to learn and i i believe also that you know when you get out to the market and you start a new job and and you know have a new job if you have this mindset in you in you and you understand the reason why is it crucial you will be a great job and succeed so this is just one recommendation from my side just spend time energy on observing and listening to the audience but thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nasa, are you having a question or? Yes, can... yes. Can sure. I... Feel so, free. Thank you. I was waiting for you. Uh, well, thank you for your presentation, everyone. Actually, I came across Budapest Student Broadcast a few weeks ago. One of the PhD students at Corbino sent uh, Marton's uh, episode to me, and she was like, finally, you know, they, I, like an English content because she doesn't speak Hungarian. So I think at Corvinus, there is a demand for that, especially for international students. It always, it was a topic uh, that um, we are looking for such a, a, a content uh, in English. So I was happy to see that you guys made the, the first move and, and created this. Uh, I've listened to Martin's episode and uh, Peter uh, Peter Molnar episode as well. And I know for Bendegus, he has a big reach on social media, like a huge reach on social media. So I was wondering if you have asked your guests to share this episode just to support you uh, to do have a higher reach. No, well, to be honest, we haven't asked him. That, that's uh, on WeChat, we sent our uh, uh, we know that David Morris also have a WeChat account and we sent our results to him. But we don't know uh, if he uh, sent it out or what. Okay, 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I I, I, I was just wondering because I always f uh, follow um, Ben de Guz on social media and I know how uh, the reach number is very high uh, on, on his either like Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and he also makes uh, um, paid ads for companies. So um, I think it would have been um, a good idea to do it, but maybe next time, but uh, well, great job. We were talking about uh, starting this, uh, talking about uh, starting to uh, co-market with uh, our guests, and uh, the um, Bendegu's episode it just like kind of happened. Maybe Regu can tell you a bit more about that. So that was kind of um, rushed in a way. So we didn't really manage to implement any. Uh, anything that wasn't implemented before because we were happy that that episode is even uh, done and Ben Degu's even uh, talks to us. So that was that was kind of a mistake, which is, I think, reflected in the engagement on that particular episode. All right, thank you. I think it was just a testing period for you guys. Um, it was very much a testing period. Yeah, OK, congrats. Okay, do we have any questions from the audience, from your fellows, or any comments, maybe? If we do have them, please raise your, raise your virtual hands. Okay, it seems that there are no further questions, so then let's move on to the second group. Uh, our second group today is uh, that of Sustainable Fashion BC, and they will introduce their awareness raising project to us in connection with sustainability in the fashion industry. So many thanks to the, fir for the, for, to the first group, and the second group can come and prepare their presentation. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> can you guys hear me? Okay, so uh, uh, greetings everyone. My name is Ethan and our group is super honored to be here to talk about our project Sustainable Fashion BC. And on the left side of the screens, you guys, you guys can see our logo. It is composed of the leaf icon with the light green color. And also we follow the kind of meme modern style of design. So that is exactly why we chose this logo. Uh, let's meet our five talented team members. It's Juji. Christoph, Marcel Kovac, and Rashid, and myself, Ethan. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for uh, always supporting and creating this amazing project. This is our table of contents. The overview of our project and our goals and ambition is going to be presented by Rashid. Christoph is going to talk about our time schedule and difficulties. Marcel is going to talk about the ways of implementing and communication, budget and outcome. And last but not least, our results and further benefits are going to be presented by Juji. Next up is Rashid. <clears throat> okay. So, in the beginning, um, we came up with many different ideas, but um, fashion in the fashion industry and sustainability was a common topic that all of us kind of thought of in the beginning. And so, we agreed upon this um, topic that was interesting to all of us. And the details of the final choice came about very quickly. Um, we agreed upon that this topic is interesting to all of us and actually important to us to to present this issue to people and to raise awareness. So it's about a pressing issue that is regarding the uh, sustainability in the fashion industry. Fashion. Uh, items and we would like to raise awareness and educate people. Next slide, please. So what do we want to achieve? The aim of our project is to raise awareness regarding the issues of sustainability in the fashion industry, as I have mentioned before, and the issues regarding our consumption habits uh, today. We are focusing on educating people on how to make choices that promote sustainability uh, regarding fashion. Um, we are going to share uh, different uh, informations and practices 
that could help people to um, make better choices and uh, make them more conscious of their choices. And we want to achieve it through creating educational posts for our different social media platforms about the aforementioned topics. And as our final project, we held an online seminar with experts from the uh, sustainability field. And in the uh, post-seminar uh, activities, we made a survey to measure how the people reacted after this. Thank you. So let's move on to the time management part. <clears throat> Uh, as such, we have decided to uh, divide the tasks among each other. Zuzi and I were responsible for the event management part, for instance, uh, contact with the guests. Rashid and Ethan did the visuals and everything IT related, and Marty ran our online campaign in order to boost our popularity. On top of that, each and every of us were uh, responsible to create a content or social media platform. Even though we have, uh, even though we have uh, successfully managed to stick ourselves to the schedule, uh, we still have some difficulties. Next slide, please. So, uh, of course, no wonder the majority of our issues were linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. It has an impact on all aspects of our uh, project. For instance, the limitation on uh, events imposed by the government caused some headaches, to say the least. Uh, our other major issue was the lack of answers. Basically, 70% of the people we approached did not even answer to our emails, or even when they did, it was a refusal. But our uh, biggest difficulty was uh, deciding whether to have an offline or an online event. But uh, ultimately, the went for uh, an online panel discussion, which was on uh, Friday the 13th uh, of November, so two weeks ago, uh, where we faced an unexpected challenge, which was one of our guests not being able to show up due to her poor internet connection. But uh, we have managed to overcome this difficulty as well, as we had two more ladies during our uh, discussion, so it was not fatal. Next presenter. Days of implementation and communication. Our main idea was to create original content on Facebook and partially on Instagram about sustainable fashion in order to raise attention to the cause. Most of the posts were introducing ideas about sustainable fashion and we also gave out notes how to maintain it. <clears throat> we also organized an event where three guests from the field whom we will be introduced further spoke about the future of sustainable fashion. While we shared the uh, organic post, in the meantime, we created a Facebook campaign targeted specifically to users who are interested in the field of sustainable fashion. Our campaign had uh, three vital elements. The main one was the advertisement of our Facebook event, while the other, other two advertisements introduced our guest speakers' background to two very various uh, targeting groups. As a result of the coronavirus situation, it was almost impossible to find a sponsor for our uh, cause. So we decided to finance our project communication by ourselves. We spent nearly 20,000 forints in order to boost, in order to boost uh, our communication via Facebook, while we also used Instagram to bring attention to our online seminar. My main aim during creating the advertisement was to reach out as many people as possible and as fast as possible, and we achieved that. More than 350 people reacted to our event just only as a result of boosting it on Facebook and Instagram. And now Juji will speak about the results. Um, yes, as every project success and impact could be measurable qualitatively by numbers, our as well. So I'm going to present uh, some data about, uh, about it. 
Uh, we are present on two. Sorry, I cannot see the slides online. Can you help me? So I, I would say just, we are presenting two social platforms, but we created this autumn in October and November, but our prominent one is Facebook. We reached uh, 1,015 followers in one and a half month, gained the 1,010 likes, and we published several articles written by us. Our event lasted one and a half an hour. We had uh, 52 guest participators and reached 920 people with the video. We waited an interactive panel discussion. In the last 30 minutes, our guest answered the topic-related questions from the online audience. Yeah, uh, our guests were uh, prominent professional ones um, related to the uh, to this area, to this topic, uh, and we were very happy to uh, uh, to get them. Yeah. For measuring our event's result impact a bit more accurate, we created a specific survey that was filled out by 36 people. The results showed that we uh, made a quite, I mean, big impact. We raised our, we raised uh, awareness, so our goal was kind of accomplished. Uh, further benefits of the project, um, I mean, survey results show that we raised awareness about this topic uh, and we are very happy that we got several inquiries from students and from a little brand uh, who, want, who wanted to collaborate with, them, with us. Now we are still figuring out the further operational uh, mechanism but it seems our project will be carrying on with involving other people, mostly, uh, mostly students. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And we are looking for the questions and the feedback of the judges. Thank you so much for, for the amazing presentation. If I may begin uh, the questions. Um, I think it's a very, yeah, you know, like this whole topic and this whole sustainability, sustainable fashion is an emerging topic nowadays. It's really trendy. I personally really like it as well. And I believe it has a potential, huge potential on the market and within any society. So it's, it's a great touch. Um, however, I also know that there are a lot of and several similar, uh, almost the same solutions out there and and uh, projects. So my first question would be, what would you highlight as your unique selling proposition? What is the uniqueness of your your idea? I mean, we are a university era theme, uh, and uh, we had um, we had the opportunity to reach the youths who are the most um, affected um, a, a portion of the society in fact uh, who who consumes fast fashion um, in very high amount and um, that's that's so we are thinking that our project is important mm -hmm. It is, it is. I'm uh, just your your reflection just came brought up another question is that so you mentioned that you're a university collaboration, obviously. So did you do any research among other um, similar projects driven by university collaborations as well when you did the market research? Because I saw the, the timeline, which was very detailed. So did you focus on that as well during the research part? Uh, we didn't focus on a uh, project, similar uh, university project. We uh, we did a research on the field, like um, who who is uh, in the field of fashion. I mean, who is designing uh, um, clothes from sustainable materials? Who uh, build their brand um, uh, focusing on sustain sustainability? Because I think. Uh, um, they reach more people. I, I mean, oh, yes. Basically, we did a, um, a market research, not a project research. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, on the other hand, our uh, goal was to um, give some um, 
give some uh, showtime kind of for at least one uh, Hungarian sustainable fashion brand, which we did with uh, Printa. So that was uh, the second goal of ours, sort of. Mm -hmm. I believe. I believe what's also unique in our project that uh, we wrote the post by ourselves daily about sustainable fashion and we put uh, our idea basically to the project, our own ideas. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, just one last question that I have in mind. You mentioned Facebook and Instagram. If you have a chance to think now, I know it's a random question. Is there any other channel, just concerning your target audience, is there any other channel that you would you think has a potential, you know, generating awareness consider this topic beyond Facebook and Instagram? Let's leave these very obvious ones. Is there anything else that you have in mind? And you can be creative. Yes, I I mean, even though I don't use it, I would say TikTok. Uh-huh. I've never had it. I don't know how it's worked, but I know it's popular now and um, maybe we actually could have gone for that as well. Mm -hmm. I also thought about uh, TikTok uh, as I'm working in the field of marketing. It would, would have been really interesting how to create their own original content in order <laughs> to boost their attention for your cause. Indeed. Or maybe be being more professional, we could use Twitter as well. Yeah. I mean, fashion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and just sorry, just really one last question because this this oh. topic I think is is um, so there are so many associations for profits around this who who you know believes that this is a kind of mission for them. Did you? Did you do any research, like listing one of or any of them, or or did you even try to connect them? Because I believe that it could also be a nice collaboration with, you know, finding a partnership or creating a partnership with with a for profit who already has, like, you know, the audience and the, the followers and and yeah. In Hungary, I don't, uh, I don't, <laughs> but there are like. Uh, uh, more um, international ones like uh, Fashion Revolution or the Business of Fashion BOF, but I feel like they're just like too, too big of a players now, and we're like such a small. Let's say I mean it's just a uni project so far. We we reached a bunch of people from our um, as packed, but like. Um, worldwide not really so i mean these two would have been amazing but these are just like dreams of course uh, at this point i mean i want to add something to this um even sustainability is a very big business <laughs> um in hungary they do not consider uh, this opportunity to to make a business from sustainability i mean um um, we we uh, reached out several NGOs who who are about um, who, whose topic or whose aim to raise awareness for, uh, about sustainability, but they are non-profit uh, uh, organization and they are still yeah. um, have a pretty high past, uh, and they still couldn't reach to be non-profit ones. So it's uh, very difficult here to change the mindset of of people, and um, through this, uh, the business mechanism of the designers. Thank you very much for the answers. Anyone else? Any questions? I think Rehard. Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank you for the presentation, guys. Uh, it is a hot topic, as all she said. Um, and uh, first of all, I appreciate that you invested your own money to the project. This is how real world works. So yeah. good to see. <clears throat> and uh, if you invested in this project, uh, what do you think? How will you manage it in the future? How will be this project? Uh, sustainable uh, as we have mentioned it's a bit unknown yet uh, 
many people uh, approach to us that um, they uh, have an intention to uh, start a sort of uh, collaboration kind of thingy with us. So maybe we're going to do that, but uh, we also have that option to just uh, give someone the account and they are going to continue it because we're not 100% sure if we can fit into this into our own uh, personal schedules because we all have uh, other paid jobs as well. So we'll see, really, it's a bit unknown, yeah. And uh, you presented the results of the awareness of the the campaign. What do you think? Uh, could you reach any behavior changing or uh, or uh, a real impact? Not only the awareness. So, what was the the impact of the awareness actually? That's the impact of the awareness. I didn't have time to present the, the results the survey but uh, we had basically uh, questions like after the panel discussion do you consider changing your shopping habits like for mm -hmm. example and many people uh, answered yes because even that many people know before the term what is sustainability they didn't know how to approach it so many people know it but they don't they lack of, of solutions so mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I want to add something to your um, uh, to your questions about uh, sustaining ourselves like financially, uh, because um, we are still we are thinking to running this project uh, like longer to, to develop this project and for this we need to be um, uh, writing uh, for sponsors and uh, for not just a one-time project so it, it uh, we have to make for, further plans future plans and for this I, I think one and I mean two months it's not enough for not just for writing just uh, just um, getting answers uh from the um, from the companies so yeah okay thank you just to, just to add one thing uh to this uh in my experience i uh, i realized that we start a business and then looking for an investor slash sponsor but first we have to uh deliver something which is uh useful for the investor or useful for the customer uh, especially and then investors and sponsors will come so this is my experience yeah, we never start with the sponsor we start with the hard work and then uh, if we have some good results we easily find sponsors or investors uh, yes, but I said um, because we are a team and we got this task in September. Uh, we didn't have time to reach the sponsor. I mean, to put the work and after reaching the sponsors. But we have a plan. I mean, um, there are many uh, designers in Hungary who works with sustainable brand. Even they are not hundred percent sustainable uh, as a company, but they work. And uh, I, I, we know that. Uh, we may could uh, um, could advertising advertising them um, for I mean for um, a small amount of money, which for them it's um, it's nothing, but for our project could be to find uh, to finance to to gain um, to gain money for uh, for advertisement. Uh, it could be uh, the the first step. Okay, thank you for your answers. Thank you. Uh, may I also just add uh, something that, as uh, Osha also mentioned, it is a hot topic, uh, sustainable fashion. And uh, But I also want to ask something about uh, the money you invested in the Facebook ads. And it's just a question uh, also from you and the judges, because of course they are more uh, uh, experts in this. Um, so, um, wouldn't be um, from your experience um, just building your brand uh, uh, organically without investing uh, money? Because, as I said, it is a hot topic. Um, 
Mm, the other thing I would like to ask, like the amount you invested in the Facebook ads, uh, are you satisfied with the reach uh, that you have reached from from uh, from this money or from these ads? Uh, because um, from my experience, uh, when I invest money uh, for a business that I work for um, in a Facebook ads, we have to spend a lot of money, a lot of money to reach people. Like even like for, I don't know, like 5,000. OK, we reach a lot of people, but we wouldn't know that the people we reach are the ones who want us to to follow us. Um, so yeah, this is my two question uh, for you. Like, I'm curious about your experience or are you satisfied with, with, with the results of the paid ads? Okay, so uh, at first, uh, time was sadly kind of vital. And because of that, uh, we could uh, not use only organic posts in order to boost our event because uh, <laughs> that time of period was, uh, too short for it and uh, this is why we also made uh, financed um, Facebook advertisements and uh, I'm also only partially um, satisfied with our uh, range of numbers because uh, if also if I would have a longer time then I could optimize uh, my Facebook or Facebook campaign in a way that it would have been even more efficient. But uh, as the time was relatively short, I'm almost um, satisfied with our results. Thank you. We, we can't hear you, Osha. Sorry, bad habits. No. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> if I may just add a short note about that. So, um, mm. you know, basically my, my focus areas is B2B, not B2C. And this topic is, is definitely a B2C topic. But I also believe that I, I understand and I know everyone is reaching for the numbers, right? Reaching for the reaches. We want as many people to see our posts as possible and our activities as possible. Sometimes I also figured out that, you know, spending time and being patient, you know, worth the time and the energy. I know you guys, you had a, you know, you had a, you know, had a mission and you wanted to do, do a great job. You did a great job. It's not a question, but sometimes not investing money at first is the is the best solution for the longer run. So if you spend time on creating organic contents frequently, you have a strategy for do that and you are patient enough. It's it's not for now, but it's for the future. And then you can you can establish a basic uh you know follower base and and yeah. contact base and then you can build on it. And when you have a kind of relative um fair voice within but I know it's really hard so trust me I'm not I'm not a Facebook advertising professional because it's a separate separate project a separate um you know profession right now it's really complicated it's 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 really technical thing on the other hand it's also about the content the structure the creativity and it's very very complex so but I personally believe that if you put the time and energy on creating um um, great and unique contents and this is why I'm always getting back to if you understand your target audience if you can create something new something that your target audience might haven't met with so often that could work and I think that just spending time on on researching and listening to the audience and doing the observation of what is already there and what I could do differently, just slightly, not like change the whole thing. It's not. It's not. It, it's not necessary. If you do just something differently, just slightly, that could that could win. Like that would be go, go great. So, so if I can just add anything, like investing money, it's great if you have the chance. But many startups and many um, uh, you know, starting businesses don't have the capacity to do that. And I personally wouldn't do that whatever how how, how it, it doesn't really matter if this is my love project and i know i i felt that this is a love project for you 
but you know sometimes you need to take time and and be just patient but also create contents frequently so actually uh, in the first half of the project the uh, only introduced uh, the organic post and only in the last two weeks we made the finance advertisements yeah and also in my opinion uh, if you already know your target uh, group on facebook then actually it is uh, unbelievably cheap to reach out a certain amount of of people who are already interested in your topic you know, I'm always because sorry if I may just have <laughs> one note for this because I'm always kind of concerned if the numbers that you see on Facebook after an ad are real. Like, you know, for Facebook, it's a business. You you pay money there, you will receive some data. But, you know, that's a concern on my end if you can trust like 100% of what you see. Uh, but I'm, working, I'm working in Facebook advertisements for... Uh, six years and uh, Wait, basically 90 percent of the numbers are true that is great to hear so you know it really well that's great to hear i'm sorry to jump in i'm very happy that such a professional discussion has emerged <laughs> and i really believe that these pieces of feedback um are really invaluable not just for this group but uh, for the other groups as well so thank you for for your interest and and for your suggestions dear members of the jury but we need to run on to the next project and i i have just uh, uh, noticed that there is even a question in the chat box so sorry man, we will not have time to discuss it now but please ask it from the team uh, beyond the frames of this uh, course and uh, i'm dear team i'm really keeping my fingers crossed for you and encouraging you to run on with the project and take it over uh, so thank you for your presentation thank you. and thank you. let's go to the thank next group, which is going to be um, the theme of period poverty in Hungary, who are going to touch upon a taboo topic uh, with the project. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you. OK, can I start? Yes. Mm. All right. Hello, everyone. Now we are going to present you about our project, which is about period poverty and hungry. Next slide, please. Um, here I am going to briefly introduce our group members. We are made of uh, six girls, which is also the reason why we decided on a topic of period poverty. And four of us are Hungarian and two of us uh, are international students. Um, I'm Jessica and I'm an international student from China. On the top up right corner, this is Annette. She's going to talk about the time scheduling for our project for you. and. The, up left corner, this is Nicole. She's going to talk about the ways of implementation and communication. Uh, below Nicole, that's Sadat. She's also an international student like me. She's from Kyrgyzstan, and she'll talk about the visual deliveries. On the right hand corner, that's Greta. She'll talk about the results and further benefits of the project. And finally, on the middle next to me, that's Petra, and she'll summarize the future plans of the project. We worked as the we worked on the project collectively and in a unity together. Um, next slide, please. So here I am going to talk about our aims of this project. So firstly, we wanted to raise the awarenesses of the pure poverty and reduce the pure shame by running our Instagram account. Um, secondly, we wanted to help out period poverty in Hungary and by fundraising, donation and education. Our our final goal of the project is to donate our funds from sponsors to homeless women shelter. Um, and then you can continue. Next slide. Thank 
Thanks. So next up, I'm going to talk about time schedule. To the right, you can see our gun chart and how it is divided into weeks, tasks, task owners and deadlines. First, we started with the conceptualization and planning part. After doing research, we realized that we found a niche market and we got very invested in the topic of period poverty. We had to figure out uh, our stakeholders and our main goals. We've also added and decided that we want to support specifically the Rish Socialische Kulturali Shalapitvain, which is one of the largest women's homeless shelters in Budapest, not only for uh, women who are homeless. Um, during the second part, we have actually launched our project and started the execution process. Uh, this meaning having weekly meetings, uh, setting weekly agendas, dividing the tasks for almost every day of the weeks, creating a project plan, which you can see on the left, um, and preparing an offline event, which unfortunately couldn't be realized due to the pandemic. So we came up with a plan B in the form of an online event. We also created boxes, donation boxes, but they're right now stuck at places, um, cafes and in the, in the bathrooms of cafes and gym bathrooms. So right now we can't access them. And the, lastly, the third part uh, was um, results, which you'll hear about later. And here you can see a free few pages from our uh, project plan, which we've actually sent to our sponsors too. Yes, um, the main communication channel was and still is our Instagram page. Um, we have decided to focus only on this social media platform by posting every day or at least every other day by sharing interesting facts and infos, not only about period poverty, but also about periods. We have contacted many potential sponsors and also um, Rish Alapitvain through emails and um, telephones. Um, for the donations. Next one, please. Um, therefore, as um, Anat has mentioned, we had to do an online event, um, which was also held on our Instagram account in frame of an Instagram live, um, where first our international girls, um, Sadat and Jessica, started a small talk about um, how poverty is in their home country and then later we had a big talk with our um, guest Lily Rutai who is an expert of the topic and also she's an online journalist of um, our age so we had a better um, reach to our viewers and target groups. Um, next one please. So the visuals our uh, of the project um, is something that we uh, took a lot of time to do so. So here on the right you can see our logo that we created by ourselves uh, in the uh, in the platform that called uh, Canva. We also used other platforms as well like PictoChart. Um, um, uh, here you can see uh, some of our posts that we created um, and um, if we did not create the content we uh, found some inspiring uh, artists that we uh, that inspire us and uh, as well gave them credits next please Uh, so here you can see some some of uh, some of our visual content examples. Uh, so on the right uh, are our advertising posters. Um, all of this was created by ourselves. Uh, next to it is uh, advertising poster for our cancelled event that was cancelled uh, due to quarantine, and uh, the other ones um, are. Um, um, visuals like uh, about us and uh, uh, some of the some of them are in Hungarian and the other ones are uh, some pictures that we shared in our Instagram page. Next please. So now I'm going to talk about the results. We have more than 900 Instagram followers and the number is still growing. The majority of followers are Hungarian women since our target audience uh, uh, was Hungarian women, but we have some foreign um, followers too. We reached in average 600 users with a post. Our uh, followers got engaged. They not only just liked our pictures, but they got um, active on our Page two, next please. 
we had a pretty high number of views on our Instagram lives, which was quite imp impressing for us. We didn't ex expect that at all. Uh, also, Boxology, which is a small uh, Hungarian company, contacted us, and uh, we managed to do a collaboration with them. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we received a lot of feedback, shout out messages, and uh, we got noticed and we are feeling that we created a small community and I think we we are the most proud of it, this uh, achievement. Next, please. And last but not least about the donations, uh, Bio Intimo was our biggest sponsors. They donated 102 packages of beds um, for us, also got a Boxologies donation box and some of our Instagram followers also donated beds and tampons. And yesterday we managed to took all the donations to Raish Alapit Vang. Next. Um. And for the future plans for our project, we choose period poverty as a topic because all six of us girls, we are really passionate about this issue. We plan to continue running our Instagram account even after this class ends, and we think that it would be a shame to leave our gained community and stop sharing on our account. Uh, we also talk about that maybe in the future we could bring further topics to our account that is related to femininity or even talk about sex education and other important topics that are need to be talked about more. Next slide, please. Um, as you mentioned, we put out our donation boxes, which unfortunately currently can be accessed. However, we want to continue the purpose of them. We also plan to put out them um, in more location and collect the doni donation and forward it to the women shelter monthly. Next slide, please. Um, and the most important thing all of us learned along our project is how important it is to start a conversation about these issues. And we think that bringing more attention to these issues can lead to better changes and stop the stigma around them. Next slide, please. <laughs> and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And we are looking forward to the comments and questions from the jury. I think Masa wants to start. Yes. Rihar, do you want to go first? No? OK. Girls, congratulations. I mean, yesterday I was checking your Instagram account. I saw the reach, uh, the numbers. I saw that Venus uh, Project, the famous podcasters, followed you. I always listen to them, which that's that's an amazing. Do you know them? Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, she was our guest, like one of the members of the Venus Project, Ruth Lily. That's, yeah. That's, that's awesome. So the fact that you created this community. And, you know, as you said, that small steps uh, leads to great changes. It is true, you know, not long ago, a few days ago, actually, they made uh, period products uh, free in Scotland, which was that the first country, which is sad, there should be more countries following uh, their steps. And I think your pro uh, project is the, is the start for something great. Uh, hopefully it's going to uh, Hungary also going to follow the steps of Scotland. I remember going to Corvinus bathroom at the E building, the old building, and finding the box. And it's a personal story. And I got my, my period. And I was like, oh my God, I was running left and right. I went to the E building uh, bathroom and I actually found a bo box full of like uh, uh, pads and tampons. It was donated and put in the in the bathroom. So even us regularly students need that. Uh, I think they should do it in university more often. Um, so uh, the visuals, I love the visuals. I mean, the content also that you created on your Instagram, it was so pleasing to the eyes when I was like, I just couldn't stop reading the comments. I couldn't stop reading the reaction of the people. It was. It was like so interesting. It was so exciting and, and how people reacted with your project. And I wanted to ask, like, did you have any paid ads on Instagram reaching this high, 
high number in such i know you start your profile or posting on september 3rd 30th i yeah. think yeah. and like in such a short period of time organically growing to this number you can like that's awesome i was i was very very pleasantly shockingly surprised positively surprised so congrats girls and uh, i think i think this project can lead to something very great as you said um i can talk to uh, hours about this so i will give the word to rihat <laughs> can have an instagram live <laughs> yes. Yes. so thank thank you very much uh, girls uh, I love the presentation as well, and I checked your Instagram account yesterday uh, too. And uh, uh, it's amazing how how uh, good community you built. Uh, about the presentation, I would be happy to hear uh, more about the issue, uh, what you want to solve, because you know I'm not uh, impacted. <laughs> Uh, uh, so I have some knowledge, but uh, not as deep as you have, uh, I'm sure. So uh, am I right that uh, your uh, target is uh, helping to 1.1 million women in Hungary uh, to help? Uh, am I right? I saw it in, on your presentation. Thanks. Um, who wants to answer? <laughs> Okay, so, um, well, yeah, as we were doing our market research, we saw that uh, women living in uh, under the period uh, of period, uh, poverty line, poverty. Um, mm. they were uh, in very much need of um, feminine hygiene products. And we looked at um, statistics and um, just other researches about the topic. And so that's why we decided that uh, we want to be part of this help and we want to add to this whole uh, movement uh, by giving uh, donations. So raising um, donations for um, homeless women or we were also targeting, uh, for example, Roma young girls. Uh, but uh, first, we just wanted to find one um, uh, shelter in Budapest, which is like the closest to us, and um, give our donations for them for this racial um, apitvai, and then maybe in the future um, do other projects and like and give uh, give feminine hygiene products for uh, other uh, groups as well. Yeah. And another question: If your uh, if your target audience is Hungarians, why did you? Uh make English and uh, Hungarian posts as well? Um, I can I answer. I feel like there are international people, like girls living in Hungary as well. And also, this is not a topic that's only happening in Hungary. It's like a global problem for all women that there are many people who are living in period poverty. So I think it's like we all think it's important for everyone to know for those who are not speaking Hungarian to know that this is an important issue to realize because um, we actually because I also talked to some of my friends who are also international girls they actually didn't have the awarenesses that many girls are living in period poverty that they can't afford hygiene products monthly so it's very important to reach out as many people as possible for them to have this awarenesses and to pay attention to this issue and topic to make it no longer a taboo. OK, thank you. Uh, only one thing to add. If you want to communicate to everybody, you communicate to nobody. Because if you don't have specific uh, messages uh, to your audience, they won't uh, feel that they they impacted or they want to involve themselves to the issue. Just to the for the future, I totally agree with you. You you need a huge awareness. You have to reach uh, foreign people here in Hungary as well. But maybe you should choose another strategy to 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 reach them and uh, not not uh, try to tell everything to everybody. Uh, can I answer this? Uh, or I don't know if it was sure, a question sure. or not. This is a question. Yeah. So 
actually we try to uh, target Hungarian women about the donation part. So yeah. we wanted to target everyone about raising awareness um, so that uh, even people from the US or from Asia or wherever uh, could just when they see our project, our page, they can read it and they they would understand what it is about. But then actually like the actual targeting about the donations went to only the Hungarians. So they were, mo I think, only in Hungarian, written in Hungarian. And um, we've that's why we've also included like the uh, the Hungarian uh, journalist Lili, Rutai Lili, and for the raising awareness part, we did a separate live with the girls, uh, Sadat uh, and Jessica, and they were talking about just in general uh, ra about raising awareness uh, and about their country. So that was the raising awareness part went to everyone and the donation part went to the Hungarians. Okay, great. Thank you and good luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, ladies. It's, I mean, you know, I, I do my best to keep myself not as enthusiastic as I am inside because I'm a woman, you know, and I'm, I'm affected and this is the, you know, this is the best way, I think, to pitch something, make the audience feel attached to what you believe in and get people as close to your topic as possible. And you found a niche topic. However, I also believe that, you know, communicating about this issue is really sensitive. So finding the right you know the edge the very very narrow edge where it's it's nice it has an artistic you know representation it's not let's say ugly it's not you know over communicated it's find the best positioning it's really hard and to be honest with you i was a little bit afraid when i i read about uh, your your uh, briefing i was a little bit afraid how you will represent this topic, present this topic visually. And I can say that it's 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 really nice. So there is nothing ugly about that. Um, also, which is, I think it's really crucial and you just did it great. Um, I just have one question. Uh, I don't know, probably on it, you mentioned about, but yeah, probably I'm wrong. One of you mentioned about you chose only Instagram for the communication. What, what is the reason behind that? Um, yeah, that was me. I think we have, um, we wanted to focus only to one platform and um, make that one um, platform and account like big. Mm -hmm. As the numbers um, you can uh, see, it actually went quite well um, because we didn't want to like um, separate to a Facebook page or or to to whatever. We just really wanted to focus there and like target um, those girls and those accounts who would be interested in this issue and who can really um, join us. And also like, um, I think that Instagram is like the top um, social media platform right now. So like, as um, you could um, have seen, People reposted us, reflected on our questions immediately and, and take actions. So I think that that was like the best um, platform to, to, to make these posts and, and, and to, to um, form a community. Yeah, I mean, you, you really do a great job and I, I hope you can continue this project because this is really unique. And as you can see, during a very short period of time, you could do a great job and high reaches and followers. And and yeah, I believe that you can do changes mindset behavior wise. However, I also believe that, as you mentioned, that Instagram is, is a hot and a, a top uh, channel right now for images. So understanding the, the platforms, um, um, identity and and um, characteristics is really crucial. So if you, you need to know, you need to understand and decide strategically why you choose a specific one. You know, as I mentioned, you did a great job with the visualization. So it's perfectly fit for Instagram. That is true. So, you know, on Instagram, you're communicating with images, with pictures, with videos, yeah, GIFs or whatever. But you need to be like, you know, strategically 
aware of why you decide and choose what but you did it good way uh congratulations again and i was while we are talking about i i didn't know like um i i hope there might be a man within the team because i think that would put a kind of trick in the whole story and i was also wondering why why just listening to you how could we involve men into this topic not now but for a longer run. And I do feel there could be very sophisticated communication messages out there because, you know, men need to, um, you know, they need to, they are also affected. They are also affected on several, several ways. Probably it's worth an observation, but this is just an idea from my point, but you did a great job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but sorry, actually, we have um, talked about it, um, this man issue with uh, Lily Rutai on our Instagram live that how can we also raise like not raise awareness in, in them, but just involve simply them. just yeah, involve them and, and talk about like in periods in general. <laughs> and, and stuff like that but yeah it would be like a further topic yeah, yeah of course i know that, that this is great just to reach a point when men aren't uh, discussed <laughs> from uh, from from period that would be great i think that would be a, a good start <laughs> yeah okay so do you want to add anything else, Masa, or anyone else, or we can go on? I think we are short in time, so uh, yes. right? Okay, yeah. I, I, I noticed that you were kind of hesitating. <laughs> I know, I know, but maybe after the project day, I will contact you first. Good, okay, thank you very much. Congratulations to the team. And I felt when, also when Greta was mentioning that uh, uh, you feel you're feeling that you, could, you have created a small community that reminded me of the little prince and the fox you know that uh, uh, now that you have tamed me or we have tamed each other we have to uh, we will need each other so i think that this is something similar with your community as well you need to nurse them you need to take care of them and enrich them so i really um wish that it's going to be a project on the long run and congratulations girls once again Thank you. So now we are we need to uh, go on to the last um, presenters of this section, uh, which is going to be the team of Bon Jovi, who were inspired by uh, a cute but at the same time uh, a socially responsible issue. So let's see what it is. All right. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Uh, I believe Park is going to share the presentation now. Yes. And then we can start. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. This is our project, Bon Jovi, and these are my teammates. Uh, Frank, me, Dawn, Bilgen, Laura, Ganesh, and Lassie Park. Next. And this is our event, Halloween photo Photoshoot for Foundation of Animal Prote Protection in Physicia Boni. Next. And this was our event calendar and the location of the event. We wanted to hold the, hold the event on Liberty Square. And unfortunately, we had to cancel October 25th due to weather reasons and with a fee of 1,200 forints. But um, FAPF foster parents was exempt from this charge. Next. And our online preparation included uh, creating our Facebook page and getting people to sign up for on our Google sign up sheet. And we advertised our event on different Hungarian expat groups and on FAPF's um, Facebook page as well. And next will be our Facebook page. We got over a thousand interactions on our Facebook page and around 300 likes. And Next will be our goals with Ganesh. Um, so I would like to talk about some of the goals that we have set and whether we have achieved them or not. So first and foremost, our main goal was to um, 
it was to raise money for FAPF since it's an organization that only re relies on donations and volunteers. We have set a goal of 30,000 foreigns because like Dawn mentioned, the foster parents were not going to be paying any money since they're already volunteering for FAPF. So the only people who would be paying would be just people who are not affiliated with FAPF. And we actually raised 40,000 foreigns between we are really proud of and when we were creating the Google spreadsheet for people to sign up, we actually uh, allowed 40 people to come on, come in on the day of the event and uh, for um, FAPF sake and for our sake, we wanted at least half of uh, these people to be FAPF foster parents and in the end on the day of the event, 25 people signed up and we had more than uh, we have about 30 dogs because some people have more than one one dog and 10 of them were FAPF fosters which was still good for us. We wanted item donations as well. We didn't set any uh, you know limits and uh, anything for that acceptable bags of clothes, blankets, animal food etc. Obviously we wanted to raise awareness about animal adoption and FAPF as well since this was for them and we did talk to people about FAPF, but this is not really a quantifiable goal. So we just hope that people noticed that this was something for a foundation and we wanted to have fun and we got so many kisses from doggies. So that was also reached. Next, please. And here you can see uh, our rough time schedule. We started planning around the first week of October. We met with FAPF online and talked to them about what type of thing that we could do and what would be very beneficial for them. Fundraiser was ob uh, an obvious one, but making it Halloween themed and, and a photo shoot uh, was also good for them because they use these photos for advertisement. And uh, after the first week, we started preparing uh, the event, event registration, the marketing phase, the preparing uh, 24th was the day of the event like we said and Dawn has mentioned that we had to cancel the 25th and after the event we had to just distribute the photos and bring the donations to FAPF. Next please. Uh, for uh, we did a lot of work at the beginning where we discussed what sorts of decorations we are supposed to prepare for the photo shoot. Uh, we realized that we can make ourselves a lot of DIY stuff so to, to minimize the cost um, as much as possible. Uh, so Gunesh was got the costumes for from the, one of the FAPF coordinators. Laura was responsible for the goals and the paper pads, and she also handmade these paper skulls as well. And I was responsible for covering the pumpkins. Uh, I asked everyone for ideas and some of them was really interesting and kind of difficult but I tried to replicate all of them and it was difficult at the beginning but the results were better than I expected. For the expense, um, the total budget is 3,000 foreigns using our pocket money but we didn't have to use our whole budget because we end up getting so many costume so many free costumes from our volunteers and the FAPF community. Okay, so I would like to talk about the day of the event. So we arrived at the Sabbath shop there around 9 a.m. in the morning of the 24th of November with several bags of donations, uh, sorry, decorations, not donations. Um, after setting up the decorations, we waited for the doggy parents to arrive. And once they arrived, we had to register them, make sure that we get their money if they are non FAPF people put the dogs in costumes uh make sure that every dog who comes in like they we have enough photos of them taken so that nobody feels left out and also that nobody runs away so this was a very fun day for us and as fun it was uh, it was also quite chaotic because dogs um on the next day we wanted to hold the event again but it was raining so we cancelled and we didn't reschedule because once we cancelled it we asked people whether they would like to come next week and only a few of them RSVP saying that they would come. It didn't really make sense and our pumpkins was rotting. And so now I'm going to let Frank talk about what it was like being a photographer on the day of the event. All right, <clears throat> on the day of the event, uh, as Gunesh uh, had mentioned, not all of our group members could make it to the park uh, due to pandemic traveling uh, restriction. Fortunately, there were a few volunteers that came to help us with the photo shoot. 
Uh, now at the park, we have set up three sections with varying theme decoration. As you can see, uh, there's two of them. Um, the reason for doing this is to be able to handle multiple dogs owners uh, coming at the same time for the dog to get a photo shoot and to create a varying design so it wouldn't be boring. Uh, in the perspective of a photographer, um, the day itself is a very cloudy day and not very bright. Uh, in normal circumstances, you need sufficient light source uh, in order to shoot a nice photo of fast-moving object uh, subject. In this case, it's a very exciting dog, you know. Uh, however, this is a Halloween photo shoot. The cloudy lighting itself benefits our team. Uh, so we have to do is to set the camera f-stop higher and faster shutter speed. Uh, but however, mo but most importantly, but most importantly, we have a dog, uh, as most of them can't really stay in one place. And so all of these were new experience for us and for the team um, to engage with pets, owners, and the com community itself in a very exciting way. Next, please. So our job after the event was to organize the photos and the way we solved it is that photos of the puppies were taken uh, with their names on it. So it was easier to organize them into into different folders and then we uploaded this to Google Drive and send them out to the owners. Next one, please. And as it was already mentioned, our second goal was to make quality photos of the puppies for FAP app so they would more likely be adopted and as far as we know two of them are already being adopted uh, for instance here you can see uh, they use one of our photos of a happy puppy and um, in the description they just introduced them next one please um, uh, we raised 40,000 forints and we also got a lot of donated items and these were delivered to the fap app storage room after the event Next one, please. And so I have been responsible for making videos for the project and I have created two social media invitation videos. And the one in the middle is the animated logo for the FAPF. And lastly, we made a short general introduction video for the FAPF. Uh, let's watch it. Next, please. Yes, there should be a sound, but I think it's OK. And um, that brings us to the end of today's presentation. And I'd like to thank you for your time and attention today. OK, thank you very much. And now that, that's the time for the jury. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question. Why did you choose uh, FAPF organization to support? I can answer that. Um, so I was already volunteering for FAPF before we started the project. I actually have a foster dog from them who is uh, sitting right there. <laughs> um, and I don't know, we were discussing what we should do and I'm very passionate about helping this organization that I have already been involved in. And I suggested to my classmates that we can choose an organization that we know, trust, and we know, like, if we do a fundraiser, we know where the money will go. Because, of course, we would have been able to choose any NGO in Budapest, sure, and we, we could have done something for them as well. But we don't really know them personally. And these people, I know them, I know the, day, the work that they're doing. I see it from the first hand and my uh, group mates were kind enough to <laughs> join my passion and um, yeah, decide that FAPF was a good cause. And uh, what is the future of this project? Do you plan any other uh, activation? 
To be honest, no. We do have some other videos that we are going to be sharing with FAPF. They are still like there's a few like tweaks that needs to be done. But in the end, our main goal is making this fundraiser slash the photo shoot opportunity for the fosters. I will still continue being volunteer um, involved with FAPF. I will still um, you know volunteer for them. But as a group, our project is like a one off thing. We completed it and we're good. <laughs> OK, great. Thank you so much. Congrats on the presentations, everyone. Um, I personally very touched to this topic as well, <laughs> as um, I also have foster dogs and my my boyfriend, he is working with dogs. Uh, he he so and we have together we have three adopted dogs so i couldn't be more attached to this topic however i also believe that there is um, a level of of lack of awareness and lack of of uh, yeah i think awareness and and knowledge for like general people who are before adopting it was myself as well so it was it was relevant for me as well before i met with my with my with my boyfriend because you know we have a perspective what we believe is good for a dog but actually probably we are missing something very important things so i i was constantly thinking about while listening to you there is a huge need for educating the people how to be um how to be more aware of before they deciding to adopt. And yeah, I understand your motivation. You are like, you know, this was a project you had to, you had to do something and you had to find something that you can, you can, you know, dedicate your time, your energy for the three months. But I also believe that this, this can be also a love project, right? So if you spend like months on something, you know that can be that can be something that you are definitely driven by and passionate about right that that's worth the time and then worth the time um so i also believe that there is a huge need for for education which could be a longer run for for such a project um but yeah congratulations also uh yeah so, so Rihar just asked the question that i wrote up so yeah thank you so much Thank you. Thank you. Uh, congrats, guys, for your project. I'm also on the side of being a good, uh, dog uh, lover. Um, so I think it's a very creative idea, especially it was a perfect timing for Halloween. Um, I was checking your Facebook account. I went from uh, the bottom to, the, to up, and I was really very, very excited to see the pictures. However, I saw you just posted on Facebook the Google Drive link. So I think the one you sent, uh, I think, to the owners as well. So I was waiting for to actually see the pictures on Facebook because you have these very good, cute dogs pictures that you could have broke the internet with, you know? And and I think also there is another, because you have to use the power of, you know, internet and this technology. There is a virtual reality exhibition, for example, if you don't want to post just a random pictures or maybe make a story out of these pictures. I mean, meet uh, this dog, he's a fairy tale. Or if you get the permission from the owners as well, because it's very, very amazing pictures. I, I was last night at 1 a.m. I was checking them. I was like, oh, such a cute uh a dog but again i was waiting um to see them uh on, on facebook as well not just the, the the google link but congrats guys thank you i mean um making our facebook page and um basically um uh, social media as much as we like we are media students it was never our goal to have a facebook page for ourselves the only reason that we created uh the bone jovi page was so that once we created the event, it looks like it's created by Bon Jovi and not Ganesh Cesar or, you know, Frank or Ganesh Dawn. Um, so we wanted to make it official, but in the end, we wanted to do something for an organization and for uh, the basically dog parents. And we, I don't know, it felt a bit weird if we 
made it about ourselves and our page and our our project instead of about them and and we didn't want to divert the attention from FAPF to our page so we sent the photos to FAPF they are being shared on FAPF and uh, private dogs who belong to people they do whatever they want to do with their photos and we didn't want to like um I don't know get them upset or I don't yeah <laughs> all right all right OK, so if there are no further questions. Yes, many thanks uh, for this team or to this team as well. And uh, we are having a coffee break now until 11 o'clock. So take a bit of rest and see you here at 11. Be, be, please be here on time. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.
か
alcohol. <laughs> so um, it will take like a little bit of time. I think 30 I seconds just like to show the, yeah, we, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> like our branded uh, background. Very creative. Please don't look at it. <laughs> um, okay. Aris, and you also run the video uh, with this uh, screen sharing, or you will share the link? Yeah, uh, I will. I will share the screen, but I will, we will also add the link for everyone to look at. Because, um, as we understand, there is no option to share the audio, but we will send the link. Okay, um, I think uh, right now maybe, so um, everyone can look at it. Have you tried clicking when you start sharing? There is a box which you can click. It says yeah, include but, audio. Uh -huh. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work for Mac computers because we, we don't have uh, this option yet. And we, um, unfortunately, we don't have <laughs> Windows. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay, so um, you can tell me where to start and I can... Not yet, please. <laughs> we will check whether the all the members of the ju uh, jury are here. Or people to join. And then I will just introduce your presentation. Okay, okay. So Orshi, Masa, Richard, have you managed to come back? Yes, I'm here. here. Yes, yes, I'm here. We are here. Great, okay. Thank you very much. So I hope that you managed to drink a good coffee and have a bit of rest. And now we can continue with the first presenters uh, after the break, who are going to be the team of mental health talks. We decided to, to face a problem which uh, is even more topical under the COVID pandemic than ever. So, dear Tim, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear Jarius, uh, professors and MFL students. Today we are going to present you uh, Mental Health Talks, our mental health awareness campaign. So let's start from talking about the core of this project, uh, its team members. We are a team of ambitions, uh, third year communication media students that come all over the world. So um, we have different skills and experiences. That's why, uh, it, and that's how it helped us throughout the making of this project. So today we'll discuss four main stages, uh, our objectives and aims, the preparation process, our workshop, and we'll uh, conclude our project. Uh, basically, we live in very difficult times, as you know, and sometimes it's very hard to stay productive or positive, and uh, it's especially relevant for the students. As, as a matter of fact, three quarters of adults experience their first mental health uh, issues or like uh, episodes of mental health problems before turning 25. That's why we have decided to raise awareness on mental health um, issues, especially among international students here in Hungary and in Budapest, since most essential information is usually uh, in Hungary and it was crucial for us to spread information on counseling and psychological help um, services. And most importantly, uh, we strive for creating um, safe space for our participants to communicate and share their experiences. So my uh, teammates will tell you more about it. So um, let's start with the preparation stage. So it started in late September with the brainstorming of ideas as well as creating um, the time schedule for the project. Um, the campaign officially launched in early October with the launch of our social media accounts as well as um, consistent posting on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we held our in-person workshop October 24th, and in November we had our two online events, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And right about now, we're finalizing our campaign. Uh, so for our Mental Health Talks project, we've created two social media pages, Facebook and Instagram. And uh, for this account, we had to create a memorable logo, uh, which we made based uh, basing on our knowledge in the field of semiotics. Uh, it consists out of three symbols, heart, brain, and a dialogue bubble, symbolizing conversations that we held about cognitive and emotive aspects of human mind. Uh, we are highly engaged in our accounts, and we have been constantly post posting twice a week, and uh, we are mostly targeting students. 
uh, for our Instagram, we've chosen a special design where all the posts, most of the posts are connected in the feed. And the purpose of that was to visually stand aside from other mental health awareness projects. And uh, also we are very proud to uh, have our project being featured in the Corvinus International blog. So, so using, using social, social media, media and consistently and posting not posting. to be enough, we then decided to host an offline event as early before. For the preparation part, the budget on this project is around 11,000 foreign in total. Since we are, uh, were able to get the location for free, we only have to pay for the printing documents, food, drinks and gifts for our participants. We aim to provide our audience a warm and cozy environment with good location, easy to assess. Uh, of course, welcome food and drinks. On top of that, we wanted to create for our participants such a sensorial experience by the cinnamon scent in our workshop with warm light and shimmer candles. Along with that, since it is in the middle of the pandemic, we try to provide a safe space where we follow all the COVID-19 precautions with air ventilation and as in mental health workshop, of course, no judgmental policy. Uh, as a core value of the workshop, we have different interesting quality activities to raise awareness for our participants. And here are some captures of our offline workshop with amazing participants and a lovely service dog. And at the end of the workshop, we ask them to fill in a feedback questionnaire. And after we receive their feedback, we send them a certificate of participation through their emails. By sending out these certificates, we have encouraged them to complete the survey and we managed to get all 14 participants' feedback. Here we have summarized their responses. The majority of the participants, 13 out of 14, felt satisfied with how the workshop was organized. And using music in the background and candles to light up the room throughout the workshop, we have created a warm and cozy atmosphere for everyone to feel comfortable sharing their stories. So 100% of the participants liked the ambience of the workshop. Uh, we also asked about which parts they found interesting and useful other than the snacks and drinks we provided and the activities were also welcomed by the participants and the three most uh, favorite activities were self-care tips, counseling information and ice-breaking games. And moreover, if we organize another workshop, most of the participants would love to join us. And uh, here we have some comments uh, taken from the survey. It, all of them are positive feedback and we are very happy with how the workshop turned out and we believe the workshop was successfully organized. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about our online events. So uh, we, we actually call them talks. So the talk number one was um, with uh, Dr. Mary Jolt and Mary Daniel from the Awakenings Foundation. It was held by Teams and, oh sorry, via Zoom and our peak viewership was at almost 40 people. Uh, talk number two with Gerge Kishpal, a psychologist from the Corvina Student Support Services. Mm, we're happy to have had the chance to talk to them since they gave us professional information. Uh, so in this section, we will talk about how our project experienced a few limitations and how we overcame them. First, we have promotion on social media, which mainly dealt with how we had to promote our social media accounts in order to raise awareness for mental health and show its importance. Second, we have campaign maintenance, where we basically tried to implement this project both online and offline through various events and keep up with regular posting, creating content, etc. Third, we have psychologists, experts, collaboration, where our main concern was to get professional help from trained psychologists by contacting them and getting the best advice on mental health. And lastly, we have COVID-19 restrictions, which dealt with us hosting online events with professionals where they talked about the importance of mental health in accordance with the restrictions of the current pandemic. Therefore, we would like to conclude our presentation by highlighting a few main topics. Engagement. This project has taught us a lot about creating a community where we can bring people closer, share the same interest in a topic and experience the same issues. Motivation. With this project, our main goals was to motivate picking up habits related to mental health and motivate them to seek help wherever it is needed. Awareness. Another one of our key goals was to raise awareness on this topic that is mental health. As we are not trained professionals, we have tried our best to give out as much as credible information we could find to get a better and deeper understanding of what comes under mental health. Helping hand. With this project, we wanted to extend a helping hand to anyone who has experienced any issues related to mental health, which brings us to the next topic, 
you are not alone, where we want to let our audience know that you are not alone and we want to be there for you and give out as much help as we can. And lastly, future plans. During the semester, we have gained a lot of new and valuable information regarding mental health, and we want to continue sharing this experience with future students. Therefore, we plan on passing this project to our university student organization, Budapest Blend. So thank you so much for your attention, and we will be taking any questions you have. Stay safe, and don't forget that your mental health always comes first. Okay, and there's a video that you can also see using the link, but if not, if you're fine with listening to it without the video, uh, without an audio, I think I can also check it. Okay, so I think we are running out of time, so um, uh, I'll be closing the link, but you can also check it uh, if you want later with the link below. Okay, thank you very much. And now I'm asking the jury to reflect upon the presentation. Thank you very much, guys. Um, you know, it's 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 also a topic that it's so easy to to relate pretty closely, as we all feel the the effect of COVID. No matter who we are, no matter what we do, no matter how old we are, it really doesn't matter about the, the gender and anything. So it, it, we are all affected. However, I feel that mental health itself is a huge. It's a very broad topic. So there are so many um, aspects or, 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 um, or um, more specific problems below like the general health issues that I think individually worth observing and focusing on. And I'm just wondering if you consider, um, if you consider any specific topic to choose, choose below like, you know, specific one or, at the beginning, if you didn't, did anything came up after the workshops and after the meetings that you think worth focusing on if you would like to continue the project? Um, yeah, I think I can answer that. So basically for as we are not uh, trained professionals, we cannot really give out. Arisa, sorry, I'm not sure if it's on, I'm sorry, could you please repeat? But I, I didn't hear it. I'm not sure if it's on my end or me neither, me neither. Okay. Uh, do you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah. sorry. Uh, so basically, we are not trained professionals, and uh, that's why it was so important for us to not to misinform um, our people who visited us. So that's why um, our main focus on our workshop and our social media was to spread awareness of counseling services and psychological help 
where to get help, uh, especially for Corvina students, but we also include like universities like ELTE and BME, because there, there were a, little, uh, a lot of people from different universities. So we gave out this information, which is very essential. Um, we got, so I would say that our main goal was to spread awareness of um, general mental health problems, and it is fine to have it, and um, like we are supporting you, something like that. Uh, and uh, most importantly, uh, spread information regarding counseling services for because for some people, even making this step is really hard. So yeah, and in regards to that, we um, in our workshop, we basically just share their experiences, create a safe space for people to feel comfortable to open up and to talk. Uh, so basically, it's more like communicational uh, kind of event. Regarding the online talks, um, our first talk was, uh, was the with uh, Dr. Mere, um, Joy, Joy Mere. Um, so uh, he's from this NGO, Waking Foundations. So he talked about more about um, the illnesses uh, and more like, um, for example, like depression, anxiety and schizophrenia, which are kind of common nowadays. So um, he was talking about that part and he as a um, um, person who has experience uh, with that, he has more than 10 years experience in that uh, sphere. Um, we were able to get more like, credible information from professionals. And regarding the counseling services, we had the second talk, as you heard, um, with the um, uh, counselor at Corvinus. So um, I think from us, we didn't get any, we didn't give any misinformation. We gave only the link and only the sources that they can use uh, to decide for themselves. And we got in essential uh, and specific information from professionals. So I think in that um, um, case, I think we did it uh, well. Yeah, absolutely. So I also believe that, you know, creating a bridge between a professional who can provide you the support, like from professional perspective and the affected people, the target audience is crucial. So you did that one. That was your purpose, which you did great. Um, uh, I was also wondering during, you know, while I was um, listening to your presentation, if you planned any uh, part of the workshop streaming, like making it available for a larger, you know, public for, for your alumni or for, you know, your student, um, your classmates and, and other Korean university students. Um, um, yeah, so I think, who do you want to answer it? Yes, yeah, you, you can go okay. ahead. Ah, OK, OK. So regarding, regarding to that um, question, I would say that um, because we strive for creating a safe space for everyone, I think not, not so many people would feel comfortable and safe uh, talking before the camera and sharing their own personal experiences. So that's why it, was, it wasn't um, the case and it wasn't an option for us because we really shared like some personal experiences regarding our mental health issues of what we had in our lives. So, um, and this is what we talked about in the part of creating safe space and sensory experience, because you cannot feel and you cannot experience the same things that people who uh, managed to visit us, who managed to um, attend, because uh, when you have this kind of atmosphere, you would open up more. And if you're just like far away on online, it would be much harder. So that's why we try to give more like feelings and atmosphere in our offline workshop and more like knowledge and professional um, experience uh, in our online. So it was, uh, we like, differentiated them. Yeah, we also did record the online uh, talks so you can find them on our social media pages. Great, great, thank you. Thank you so much. So congrats again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Rihad, do you want to go first or should I go first? Uh, I, I can go, okay. okay. So thank you guys for your presentation. Uh, I love the idea uh, with the same background. Uh, it, 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 it is nice. And uh, I would like to just join to Orshi uh, about the online workshop. You know the impact of the nowadays, so we, we cannot organize offline events, unfortunately and uh, it has a bad impact to the men mental, mental health as well so maybe you should uh, find out some some solution 
to to organize an online workshop where where you can create a safety uh, space for people as well because nowadays this is find out how these things online unfortunately but uh, or she asked everything what i wanted so this is only what i wanted to add thank you <laughs> All right. Uh, first, kudos to you for this professional background that you have created. It is uh, really very professional, I have to say. Uh, obviously, it is a very um, sensitive topic. I mean, as far as I know, at Corvinus, there is a support group or someone to turn to if needed, but initiated by the university. But it is, uh, it is in Hungarian. Uh, so, yeah, I also, uh, when I was seeing your video, I was a bit... Um, focusing on the number of people who attended the offline event. Um, I mean, it is needed to have this conversation offline, but uh, nowadays it is recommended to just stay um, in the online side. But I know you have organized an online uh, live streaming on Facebook, as you have mentioned. So I'm curious if that uh, online event was as successful as the offline one. Like, could you please tell us uh, or introduce, uh, introduce us uh, uh, the numbers of um, the people who have watched the event uh, online with you on the live stream. Mm -hmm. So Celine so can talk about it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, the first one, as I said, it was held on Zoom and we had I, like almost 40 people, I think 37 or something. And I mean, people were pretty engaged. So we think that was a success because, um, I mean, we didn't plan like, it was like we had these two events almost back to back. Um, so it was difficult, like when it came to um, like the promotion of the event, but still like so many people showed up. So we considered it as, as we consider it as a success. Um, but the second one was held via teams, but it was mostly oriented for like a recording. So we didn't really plan to have a actual like discussion. It was just for the recording. Yeah. And uh, regarding um, that, I can also say that um, for for these calls, I think they were fine. Um, some people asked their own questions. Uh, for example, in the first Zoom, uh, Zoom call, it was more like a real talk because the second session with the um, counseling team was more about like mostly information, and the first one was more about uh, Dr. Uh, Mede like sharing his own experiences with his son because uh, there were two people presenting that day. It was uh, Daniel Jolt, uh, Daniel Mede and Jolt Mede. So Jolt Mede is a doctor and he's a father, and his son was old, like um, I think 40 or 35 years old. So he was the one who experienced in his own life, um, and that's why they came to this foundation. That's why they started working in the sphere. That's why it was it it was real. We were real lucky to get like them because they speak about it, their own experiences, share uh, how to get help. He really gave us, um, like he suggested people who were listening to go to this Awakenings Foundation, they can, uh, where they can uh, give you psychologist help and most importantly, uh, where they have these uh, sessions um, even online now for, for the current uh, conditions, they hold online events um, like talks uh, where they can talk about their experience. So, so basically the workshop that we did, but more from a professional kind of stay, uh, point of view. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't again, I have to mention, uh, but um, yeah, uh, regarding the counseling information nowadays, um, counseling at Corvinus is in English too. And um, for example, in this call, it was really essential for us to know more like insights in the counseling because not so many people know about counseling and if they know about it, they are still afraid. So um, um, our guest told us about like how to get help, how to text them. There are actually 16 people nowadays and the counseling team is now growing in Corvinus. So um, if you want to get help at Corvinus, you, you probably get it. Um, and uh, as we understand, uh, like the get yeah, our guest, Gergely uh, Kishpal was quite professional, so I would say I would uh, recommend him and uh, his colleagues. And uh, it just a uh, small note for everyone listening: um, if, like doesn't matter, like mental health, 
um, career, uh, education, and even people with some disabilities, they have um, counselors on every topic of that. So um, if you want to, um, you can check our <laughs> uh, social media, find the links, or just uh, look at it uh, on Corona's website and uh, uh, sign up for a counseling session. Thank you. Yeah, that was a useful answer. Uh, I will check it for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much for highlighting this project and your creativity and enthusiasm throughout the uh, project process. And now we need to run on to the next group, which is going to be the group of uh, 36 language club who will uh, try to connect uh, or make a connection between two distinct, but at the same time, unique languages with their project. Thanks. Bye. Uh, thank you. Hi guys, uh, can you see um, you guys see me now and our presentation too? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I would like to begin uh, my presentation now. Okay, so. So hi everyone, we are the 36 language club. Our group has three members, Joey and Andre. So here is our structure of today's presentation. Firstly, uh, the introduction part and the Facebook uh, fan base management going to be represented by uh, Joey and Mighty Events. And um, uh, Andre is going to talking about um, reason and for the plan. So I would like to introduce my friend, Joey. Hello. Hello. So uh, about 36 Language Club, it is a non-profit group so sponsored by students from Coven University, which is us. It is a long-term project for the purpose of educating and promoting Hungarian language for all Hungarian beginners in English language, helping people understand and adapt to life in Hungary. And for short-term project, which is currently, we aim student group as a main target because based on the data, every year there are 180 new Vietnamese students who achieved government scholarship to attend Hungarian universities. However, it is uh, obligatory for 85% of them to achieve at least the A1 level of Hungarian language. Next one, please. So the platform Facebook was chosen as our main carrier since the timeline of Facebook is more orderly so that people who follow our page, they would not accidentally miss out too much um, content. And secondly, Facebook is uh, more interactive and transparent. Its real name system has increased the visibility of our page. So that the goal of our project is to post five to six per posts per week focusing on five aspects, language, grammar, conversation, vocabulary, and uh, local culture, and also Q and A's. So um, in the meantime, to organize two offline events, keep the number of participants within uh, 10 to 50 people due to the pandemic. Next slide, please. And just like a brand, if we want to leave impression, the logo is important. So our group member Ming self-designed an original logo for our language club, and same as all those uh, graphics that we displayed on our Facebook page. And about the content of the language learning, the resources are based on the official Hungarian language course book, and with the, and with the help of bilingual and uh, local friends we check before we posting. And uh, however, there are difficulties as we run the page. Since the limitation of our group member, there is only one people who is uh, fully skilled in graphic design. Therefore, we cannot manage to publish two posts per day as we wished. And uh, after one week of running the page, we recognized that the view of each post had decreased. So I mean, those most selected ones and uh, that they are lighter content, such as language memes, Therefore, we assume that the interesting content would be like um, more attractive, but um, the lack of language knowledge is indeed an obstacle that slows down our progress. Uh, and now me is going to continue. Okay, so I want to talk about the events uh, we organized. Uh, so we successfully organized uh, two events before lockdown, one on 25th October, which was a, a, story, uh, a, a study room and uh, in it, 
at 8th November, which was a zoo expedition. Our intention is that uh, we will have one indoor and one outdoor so we can see the effect of both kinds of uh, activities. Uh, because of the situation of COVID-19, we limit the number of one event around 10 to 15 people. But by the way, due to the small number of participants, we could manage to ensure qualification over the quantity. Uh, in two events, we quickly got full slots because uh, I was um, promoting those uh, on reverse events that belong to Vietnamese uh, Student Association, uh, which was uh, which I worked for. And in the first activity, uh, the study, study room on uh, 25th October, we invited a bilingual friend who knows both Hungarian and Vietnamese uh, language. So our target is providing basic knowledge of uh, Hung Hungarian language, like you no know, people on, on uh, want to know how to cow and how to interview yourself at the end of the day. And during the study, the study room, after teaching and revising the knowledge, we played a few games like uh, 369 Club or uh, vocabulary matching. And also, we can be int introducing um, ourselves in Hungarian language. So, in the second activity, the zoo expedition we decided to organize um, with around also around 15 participants, participants uh, and we invited uh, the same building of Vietnamese Hungarian and also two local friends uh, who are native Hungarians. So our target in this activity is that uh, people want to know how the, the basic term of uh, popular type of animals and also the, the term of the colors and some conversation questions. And in the result of both activity, uh, 100 participants were satisfied with the uh, experience we get and required more activities like this in the future. One of the participants wrote to me that I was at first so scared about uh, studying Hungarian because of its uh, complicated grammar, but with those activities, I got more uh, familiar with this language and somewhat fell in love with it. So I think it's quite good um, uh, result that we can make with the activity. So the next one, uh, Andre, we're gonna talk about results in uh, the further plan we have. Good morning, everyone. So I'm gonna talk about the results of our project. So. Uh, we have accomplished our goals of five to six posts per week and have achieved 60 likes total every week. The most liked post is 120 likes. So in total, we have over 300 likes, 300 uh, <coughs> followers, uh, and around 3,600 people have reached and over <coughs> and uh, around 2,000 post engagement. The most Rich post has over 2,000 people reach and with over 500 post engagement with uh, over 100 likes. <clears throat> Other post averages from the 1st of October compared to most rich one. <clears throat> and after conducting our project, we have some valuable lesson learned. <clears throat> uh, the first thing we reali realize is Fun posts will be more interactive, so we need to focus on the content of the post, and it has to be fun and not just informative. And of course, we also do realize that if we have more share, we will we will have more likes and interaction with people. <clears throat> and thirdly, we don't really need to provide knowledge in every aspect. Uh, create. Being creative is more important. Uh, we need to collect the fun part, for example, like memes or funny puns and synonyms or fun facts that might more that might be more attractive to learners. Uh, also, fun activities during the event will make people more easy to feel more easy to learn. And lastly, uh, despite we having a weak human resources, but it doesn't really matter because with nowadays technology such as Canva, we can <coughs> have to we can speed up our progress uh, <coughs> substantially. So 
regarding our future plans. <clears throat> so firstly, we will try to enrich our human resources, like recruiting more member or associate. And <clears throat> secondly, we will try to continue at least uh, to post three or four posts per week. And thirdly, and we are still trying to um, reach out to Mongarian Language Institute or Center to help us with the content. And we also try to create a Facebook group to exchange knowledge for students. And finally, we try to we will try to reach out to more international students and not just only uh, Vietnamese students uh, like in the recent situation. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any question we would like, we are happy to answer it right now. Okay, köszönjük szépen, kedves csapat. Thank you very much, dear group. And we are listening to the feedback of the judges. Thank you guys for the presentation. Uh, first, uh, why is this topic important for you? Uh, I think as a, a foreigner, I have a lot of trouble when I, I first came here. Uh, I have to go to the, the market and I don't know any uh, any food names and uh, what what the part of the uh, the the uh, the part of uh, what 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 I gonna buy like. Uh, I don't know the term of this. And uh, when I go, I go to travel around um, uh, Hungary, Hungary, I also have trouble too. So I think it's really important to know uh, at least like basic foundation, basic knowledge of a uh, Hungarian way. Uh, I spent three years to study here. So I think that's why it's really important for me and or for every foreigners. Yeah. Okay, and I was happy to see that you have future plans. And yeah. uh, you mentioned that uh, you want to reach more people to to join to your club. And what do you think, What what is the USP or unique selling point for them? So what is your added value? How will we we'll be interested in to your language club? Uh, well, I think, I think the... For the most advantage of our group, it, it is free. So <laughs> that is the mo the biggest like plus point that we are we are offering to other learners who are interested in learning. And there's one more point I like to add for the reason we are doing this project is because, um, as you know, this scholarship, the Stipendium Hungaricum, there are like uh, some students who have to study in Hungarian. And as I heard from the feedback and from those who have in the previous uh, generation of students, and uh, they said that like the one year a preparatory program for learning Hungarian is not enough for them to study in study the whole bachelor program in Hungarian. So that's why we are doing this uh, to assist them uh, along the journey. And this is what they want, and this is what we like to do. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you for your answers. Portia, should I go first? Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> So I feel this project, congrats, first of all, I feel this project, uh, project was made um, out of your personal challenges and the needs uh, at Corvinus. I mean, um, it is very interesting when you create something uh, to educate people in a really uh, creative way. For example, when you made these memes, which I love. Um, uh, and also, um, I, I love the visuals, I have to say. Uh, I was wondering when you were talking, um, 
Do you have any plans for the future to not only create this for Hunga Hungarian language, but also other languages as well? Uh, yeah, the so the plan we have is that uh, firstly, I uh, we're gonna like uh, create a Facebook group so uh, people can exchange the uh, the knowledge that they that they have, and also we uh, gonna reach the uh, uh, some language uh, teachers like. Uh, Hungarian language teachers and also some people who are uh, know both uh, English and Hungarian. So uh, people can like send uh, send send us their questions about the language and um, uh, uh, people who know the answer gonna answer the, the questions. I think it's the really practical ways to learn language. Like uh, because we have the develop development of uh, te technology now, so I think um, we have to take advantage of this. Yeah, or for example, yeah. if Hongkong wants to learn your language, so mm -hmm. it could be an exchange. Uh, yeah, exchange. yeah, it is definitely doable, right? Because uh, we have Vietnamese who know Hungarian, and we would like to, we would love to teach some and. Exchange some Vietnam to those Hungarians who are interested in learning Vietnamese. For example, uh, the <coughs> Hungarians, uh, Vietnamese uh, uh, offspring generation who was born here, they they need they know Hungarian, but they, their Vietnamese skills are not um, sufficient. So they are they. I think they will be a uh, prosperous uh, potential audience. For yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, it is a win-win situation, and I think this is another USP uh, for your project. So, congrats once again. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations for all of you. Um, I also believe that you know when I when I studied at Corvinus, I also participated or, or uh, this um, was it a short and midterm uh, Erasmus programs, and I also feel felt that how it feels to go and travel abroad, just being in an environment when you don't know the language and it's, you know, knowing the language is, is essential to understanding, I think, the culture. And I think just, you know, that's that's kind of essential. So uh, I do believe that there is a huge value in your project and the need. However, I was thinking about if, and it's a question, so did you do any research beyond your personal intuition concerning what topics could be important for your target audience. And it's not just about your interest in the supermarket and the daily routine and solving these routines, but is there anything, anything else beyond that that your target audience would need help with? Because I well, think that's crucial. Regarding this problem, uh, we have a very, uh, we try to keep a very tight <clears throat> relationship with the members, so we always, uh, ask them what do they are what are they interested in learning in in next week or in the future weeks so this is definitely not our only our point of view but it, it is like a two way uh, feedback from both us and our members so uh, i think that problem is uh, we have already considered it and already came up with solution for it yeah, uh, and also before uh, our like uh, officially is established our Facebook page um, as our team number one, the broadcast one, they have a um, WeChat page as and then Chinese. I know WeChat very um, um and uh, so actually I asked one of the admin of our um, convenience student union to uh, give me a time slot so I can test the post some uh, contents to see if. Uh, they give our like positive feedbacks and what they interested the most. And uh, uh, the followers of the WeChat page, they got like uh, 1,000. So it's kind of a large based like number. So we can like uh, use it as our research so we can decide what content we're going to post first and next and what they like to see. So yeah, it helped us a lot. Yeah, I also very much appreciate that uh, during the presentation, you also highlighted that there was a point in the campaign when you understood that the strategy that you decided or the content that you posted was not as 
as affected as you expected, like the numbers started to decrease and then you yeah, figure yeah. it out and realize mm -hmm. and, and try to do something else. I believe that this is crucial to evaluate what you do and the results during the process and going back and iterate what should be done differently within the whole process, not from the beginning, not just one section, but during the whole time. Um, and my last question is really reflects on this because you mentioned um, or you emphasize a kind of future plan. Mm -hmm. Did you also aware of, as you mentioned, you, you constantly went back and just observed what, what were the reactions from your target audience. When you created the future plan, did you also integrated these insights that you received from your target audience or that was more focused on your perspective? I'm not sure. I, Probably I overcomplicate the question. Apologies for that. Well, <laughs> I, I think is the uh, our future plan is made uh, is um, planned out uh, with the combination of both uh, our point of view and the what our target audience uh, desire. <clears throat> so because um, we uh, we think that and <clears throat> from what our audience said there what they the knowledge they will uh, require will get more and more difficult so that's why we need to <coughs> reach out to more language institute or, <coughs> or uh, either other agencies that have more like, <coughs> uh, academic knowledge that can help uh, with when things started to get more difficult that is like one example to answer your question. Thank you very much and go Gretel again. Okay, thank you very much. I was so happy that you finally found a topic which is very close to your heart and you were the lot because you were a small team. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. And now we are turning uh, to the last group, um, the last presenters of today who also touched upon a socially responsible mission, Women X Unite. Tell us what it was. Just one second. Let me just share my screen. All right. So hi, everyone, and thank you for being here for our last presentation. Our project is called Women X Unite, and here is our team. Um, Abir, Dorka, Esther, me, and Zorka. And below our names, you can see how our tasks were being divided, but we all worked on a little bit of everything as well. So to start off, I'm going to ask a question. Have you ever heard of safe homes? If not, safe homes are anonymous housing centers where women can be admitted to when their safety at home is being threatened. This, of course, is usually in the case of domestic violence. According to statistics, uh, by the NANE organization, one in five women in Hungary have experienced domestic abuse. Our project focuses on the safe homes run by the local ecumenical relief organization here in Hungary. They have safe home centers where women are admitted to through local authorities or crisis hotlines when their living conditions become unbearable. 50 to 60 percent stay for several months, while 30 percent stay for six months. This is the maximum time allowed by the government. One second. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> so our major goal is to help abuse women living in safe homes by collecting makeup and beauty products for them, thus trying to bring normalcy to their daily routines and offering distance support. We also uh, created events where women can support women, such as donation gathering events and sports events. Our logo with the X symbol has several different interesting meanings uh, which resonate with our purpose, like the uh, fact that, uh, that X can be seen as the unknown in math, which can be translated as how to help abused women uh, is an unknown or unspoken topic among the society. X also emphasizes strength and exclusivity. 
The coral color uh, is considered as a sign of hope, health and happiness, and is often associated with femininity. As for the time schedule, uh, the start of our project, which was the 7th uh, of October until the 7th of November, we contacted sponsors, uh, we created face our Facebook page, we promoted our uh, events there. Our two su successful events on the 5th and the 7th of November, we uh, counted all donations, we contacted the NGO about the mm, donations and sent out a Google form among those who participated for a review. Uh, lastly, on this morning, on the 27th of November, we were able to gather the donations offered by DM uh, from their central office at ERD. Um, our aim was to get people involved by appealing to their emotions as well as giving voice to an important topic that uh, generally doesn't get enough attention in Hungary. We, we provided access and information in general um, for those who are willing to make actions for our cause uh, but don't necessarily know how. The method was by creating a Facebook page. We put a lot of effort in uh, creating descriptive posts that speaks to the um, potential donators. We answered all Horizon questions through Messenger. And further on, we sent out follow-up emails while securing our uh, donators' privacy. Uh, primarily, uh, we promoted our events on Facebook groups like uh, Women of Budapest, which has uh, about 7.5 thousand people, and Hungary expects around 39 uh, thousand people. We saw this as an excellent opportunity to reach as many international people as possible. Uh, we kept regular contact with the Ecumenical Relief Organization via email exchange, asking questions about their uh, preference in donation and information uh, uh, about, uh, inf we informed them about uh, our states of our project. We contacted sponsors via email from our uh, Women X Unite email address, providing detailed information about our initiative. We organized two events on Facebook, one for women's products donations, for survivors of domestic abuse, and the other one was a self-defense class we held. We had the events on our Facebook page with all the information needed in regards of what products can be donated, how and uh, what can be donated. Uh, we set up a few criteria whether the products can be used or not. The goal of both events was to collect donations. We also set up a GoFundMe page for money donations that we linked on the event. Our first event was at Hop's Beer Bar. We wanted to find a chill central place that's easily accessible, where people can come by after work and drop uh, the donations or stay with us and get to know us and our project. We got support from the location and they promoted our event on their Facebook page. Altogether, approximately 18 people stayed and chatted with us during the evening. We managed to collect seven big bags of products, as you can see on the picture. Uh, for our second event, we aim to find a credible self-defense instructor and we found a back belt taekwondo master. He held a one and a half hour class for us. 16 girls took part and we also gathered some donations. The participants were very pleased with us uh, in the class. Not only was Master Young humorous, he taught us really simple but effective techniques on defending ourselves. Both of our events were very successful. People actually thanked us for organizing the event and we actually managed to collect about 600 products. We also got 10,000 forints in profit and got 7,000 forints donations that we used to buy missing products such as makeup removal. 
Um, these are pictures of the donations. We wanted to uh, take a picture of us donating, but since safe homes are anonymous, a member of the organization came and picked up the product. Uh, as for sponsorship, our two main sponsors were the TKL Club, who have supported our project by uh, giving us a very important discount for hosting the uh, self-defense class, as well as promoting our event on their social media. We also got uh, sponsorship from uh, DM Hungary, the retail store, who supported this cause and were very happy to donate to the Women's Safe Homes. And it wasn't uh, until today that um, two of my teammates had to travel to Earth in order to collect uh, the uh, the products so we can count them and, and show them. Uh, so what's next for uh, Women X Unite? Uh, our vision for our project is to build a community of women in Budapest that works uh, for good causes. Uh, our main focus will continue to be the organization of different events and workshops from which part of the proceeds would go to different NGOs. We also want to focus this time on advocating uh, for different issues that we view as important and on encourage conversations around them by possibly organizing meetups or simply sharing uh, information on our social media. So we had already uh, actually scheduled uh, and planned for future events that unfortunately now could not happen due to the lockdown. Um, and those include the uh, donation collection events. We actually received many messages from women who could not attend the earlier events we've done. Uh, so we decided that uh, we should do more of those. We also decided to organize another self-defense uh, class after all the positive uh, feedback we got for the first one. And we have uh, received a partnership uh, from a yoga instructor who was eager to support this cause and with whom we are planning to uh, organize a yoga workshop in the future. And um, lastly, I would like to say that uh, working as a team on this project has overall been a very fruitful experience for each one of us. And we're very happy that we were able to bring our strengths together um, for the success of Women X Unite. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I think uh, that your last sentence was visible in your project. So I'm giving the floor over to the judges. Thank you so much, girls. Uh, first of all, uh, let me congratulate for the topic. It is a very sensitive one. And uh, unfortunately, in Hungary, uh, we should, uh, we need some development uh, in this topic. So I'm so happy that uh, you find it and uh, you work, work with it. And uh, I love the the usage of the X sign uh, in your presentation. Uh, I realized it. It's it's uh, it's very very nice. Um, and um, yeah, so I don't have questions. I I I would give you uh, these short feedbacks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Masha. Would you want to go first, or or should I continue? Go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, as just I can, I can just uh, say the same words as as we had it. So it, it's a very brave choice, and you did a great job, and you covered a topic that is is crucial. And I do believe that we all need Hungarians need a lot of education. So um, I felt, and I felt that during the presentation that you know, providing and supporting an organization is one aspect that you can do. While I think there is a huge need for educating the society on another level or another angle, it's really crucial and, and there's a huge need for that. So I probably would like, rec it's a recommendation for the longer run, uh, beyond like, you know, creating a donation ev event is, is great and we all know it's needed, but I always uh, think about that, okay, we are just collecting gadgets and tools or money, will that make real change? Or will people feel the real value behind it and not, and will people be motivated to pe be part of the conversation based on donation? Or is there anything else that is needed that motivate people to hear you, to listen to you and to understand your motivation and your passion? So I think these are the so for me, an event like like this, like donation, is is a kind of surface, 
and it definitely worth this topic definitely worth go beyond the surface and uh, trying to understand how we can generate behavior change it's it's really hard it's 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 super hard and i think it's not like a university class topic for sure but you know this is something that's worth talking about um i also uh i also love that you began presentation with with identifying clearly the pain points here uh, and probably this is why I was looking for something educative more educative within your presentation um, but congratulations so I also don't have specific questions but I hope I could add something to you that you could you know take away afterwards and and it's a great choice so congrats and thank you so much for the uh, also the inspiration and the experience Thank you. Um, we are planning on launching an Instagram page. That are, is our second step. Um, but the issue here is that will we be educating women on how to leave abusive relationships or will we be needing to educate men about this? So it's a very, it's a broad and, and heavy subject that we are maybe not equipped to do. Um, but of course we can research and link all kinds of information that we find online by professionals and that way um, raise awareness. But uh, our main goal was to in fact raise donations and this is where we were as successful in. So in the future we will be definitely looking forward to this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, girls. I think it was, uh, I mean, the way you presented it, starting with shocking statistics, made the whole project more powerful, to be honest. Uh, just for the people who don't know the statistics, you just introduced the whole topic. I mean, uh, the logo, uh, I think it's very, very well thought out. Um, uh, I have a question. Um, did you talk um, oh i forgot to mention that that it's a perfect timing because two days ago was the international day for the elimination of violence against uh, women so again great timing uh, i mean it's, um yeah my yeah my question was that did you talk because you used beauty product to to give the the women right plus the self-defense uh, courses uh, and in the future the yoga courses um have you talked to, to women who experienced this uh, violence um, before starting the whole project just to choose what to uh, donate them um, because you have decided on the beauty products, right? Or was it just because the DM um, sponsorship uh, just offered these kind of products or? No, we only got the DM sponsorship two weeks ago. So that was not the um, main thing. I think it was more about, okay, we can donate clothes, but that's a lot to handle. And then we also thought that, like, these women stay for up to six months, and many of them have been financially abused. So they have not had access to beauty products. And we just thought about what could really, like, kind of offer distant support, but at the same time kind of maybe give them confidence to restart their lives and stuff like that. And we just really thought that, you know, cosmetics, you all ladies have this small routine in the mornings that really, you know, they start their day with. So this is why we thought that this would be kind of a nice thing to donate. And also, uh, we asked the NGO about their preference in uh, donation. What, what uh, would they uh, like to get and stuff and they said that uh, actually they really think that makeup is a good choice um, and they also organized um, something similar to that previously uh, something uh, beauty d uh, day or something like that but it was a similar concept so yeah we just got the <laughs> the green light from them as well so and also we wanted to find a way women can support each other. And the, the main idea that was that most, most women have products at home that they don't actually use, maybe because they got some makeups uh, as a present or because they just simply don't like it. And our idea was that this way they can use this for a better purpose.
Yeah, I think you're very well thought out, as I said, and nice matching uh, outfits, so very professional. Congrats. Congrats on the whole project. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations from me again. I think that your project has showed uh, that hard work pays off. So thank you for finishing the day with such a presentation. And now the, uh, there is a time for the lunch, finally. So uh, we are going to have a one and a half hour long lunch. So let's meet here at half past one again. And until then, uh, take a bit of rest and the judges will discuss um, the, the final uh, order. To see you at half past one. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See you.